Okay, moving right along with part two, we're going to get started on the dial. And we're going to use a cylinder primitive. And by default, uh, it's oriented wrong, it's way too big. So we need to take the radius down to 16, take the height to 0.5, and the orientation to plus Z. I'm going to raise that up, bring it forward out in front, go to a front view. and the radius still is too big so we're gonna take this down to maybe 13 looks pretty good so we'll leave it at 13 and I'm gonna push that back until it seats in there we go that looks pretty good right there and we need to take the rotation segments up because you could see by default it's at 36 and you can see it's not exactly a perfect circle it's got all these uh, hard lines in there so we need to round this out a bit more. So I'm going to take this up to about 150. That should give us what we need. Go over and click make editable. Now we're going to need to optimize this. So I'm going to go into point mode and by default Cinema 4D does not optimize the mesh because these, the cap is not connected to the body. So if I was to go into polygon mode, select the cap and pull that back you can see it's a separate object and we do not want to start fooling around with the geometry with that going on so let's go to point mode make sure you don't have any points selected go to function optimize click OK and that'll take care of that now if we go in and select that face and pull it back out now everything is one solid object alright so I'm gonna grab the live selection tool I'm gonna to select those front faces again I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to extrude, enter, go to a front view, I'm going to pull those in, okay, and then I'm going to pull it in one more time. Actually, I'm going to undo that because I want to go to extrude, and I want to extrude that in just a little bit. Now we can go back to extrude, enter, and like that, there we go. Now I want to extrude this out. This is going to be a center button here. Go to extrude, enter one more time. And let's make one, two, three. All right, let's go to point mode, live selection tool again. Let's hit UL to bring up loop selection. And now it's going to be wanting to know what loop we want to make. So there's these there's this loop right here on the center uh, keypad object. We need to select that, so click it, and then hold down shift, and we need to do that one, that one, and we need that center point as well. Uh, but you can see if we were to do that, it's going to select a bunch of other points. So we're going to go grab the live selection tool and shift select that center one. So now I'm going to go to a top view. And I'm going to take those points, I'm going to push them forward. All right, go back to perspective. I'm going to hit UL, and this time I'm going to control click that last loop to deselect it. Now I'm going to push that, those sets of points out. UL, control click that last loop. I'm going to push that out a little bit. That might be a bit too much. Now I'm going to just click that center one, a center point, drag it out just a little bit. Okay, and now we've got a nice rounded center button. All right, that looks pretty good. So now we need to go back to the cylinder. I'm going to double click it and rename it dial. I'm going to go into line mode, and I'm going to hit UL. We're going to select that line, control click to select that one, and more than likely we're going to do this one here as well. So I'm sorry, not control, we want to shift click to select multiple lines. Okay, so we got those three, we need to right click, go to bevel, go to convex, change the subdivision to three, and we'll click and drag to the right. That will round out that for us just a little bit. Make sure you don't go too far. And now we got a nice rounded edge on the dial. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we need to take care of the screen and set that up. 
So let's go into point mode, grab the live selection tool, click on the MP3 player. Uh, let's right click and go to knife. Make sure you're in loop mode and I need to click and create another loop cut here just right above that dial. That will create a line for us. Grab the live selection. Take these two points here, drag them up just a little bit. Now we're going to click and drag all, click and select all four of those. Grab the scale tool. Only on the X axis, click and drag to the right. That's going to scale those out for us. You don't want to go too far. Maybe something like right there might be okay. Might be too far. Well, let's find out. Let's grab, uh, let's go into polygon mode. Grab the live selection. Let's select these faces. See if any of them turn a different color. Everything looks good. So let's select this first uh, square here. Go to selection, set selection. And here in the name, we're going to call this screen. And you can see here it's given us a um, it's given us a selection tag. Okay, so we'll just deselect the off of that. Now what we need to do is select this top trapezoid type polygon up there at the top. That's where we're going to put our label at for the brand name. We're going to go to selection set selection again that creates a second selection tag we're gonna call this one YouTube because uh, seeing as how I, uh, I'm gonna upload this to YouTube we're just gonna make this a YouTube mp3 player deselect I'm just clicking here in the objects manager just to deselect that tag go back to the mp3 player alright that looks pretty good and I think what we're gonna do is I'm going to have uh, maybe a white silverish color face for the front uh, we may change that later, but for now we'll leave it at that. Uh, this is going to have a chrome ring around it, and in the back might be uh, perhaps maybe a dark blue or maybe even a black color. So what we need to do is turn the hypernerve off, and you can see now we've got a bit of a problem. That polygon turned black on us, so we're going to need to... Let's see if we can fix this by selecting these two lines and pulling them up. Nope, that didn't work. Alright, so we're just going to take and pull those lines down. There we go. Alright, that got rid of that. Sometimes we have overlapping polys. And because of the way Cinema 4D works, sometimes you have to make the accordion adjustment in order to get rid of that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go back into polygon mode and we need to do some loop selections here so I want to go into this corner up in there. I'm going to go UL, going to click that one, so, uh, con uh, I'm sorry, not control but shift select the second loop, that's going to do that one. Now we're going to go with a UF, that's going to do fill selection so we want to shift click the inside that will fill all the rest of the empty polys that we haven't selected. And now we want to go to the live selection and we're going to control click the screen because we've already made that one a selection and that top polygon there. Alright, so now we want to go to selection, set selection, and we're going to call this front paint. Alright, deselect that tag. Okay, so now we want to do the chrome. So I've got a minute here to do this, so we'll quickly just do this one here. So let's hit UL to bring up loop selection. And I'm going to do that one there. I'm going to go to the front face. I'm going to hit that most inner one right there. I'm going to go U, F for fill. I'm going to shift click to fill that in. I'm going to go to selection set selection this will be our fourth one we're gonna name this one chrome alright so that concludes part two of this tutorial uh, so we'll just see how this one goes and depending on how many more I want it then we'll move on to part three and we'll get started with the texturing so thank you for watching